Adding a subscriber counter to your live stream can easily up engagement with your audience by giving them an incentive to subscribe to your channel. So that being said, in this video, I will show you how to add one in OBS using a tool that I created for this very video. Stay tuned for more. Firstly, let me explain to you why other methods of displaying your subscriber count aren't quite as elegant as the way that I'm going to show you today. In many situations, streamers just opt to capture a website, so if you've watched any videos before this one, you've likely been given the exact same four steps. Open your browser, go to Social Blade, capture that window, and crop it to just be the number. And while that does technically work, you're not free to customize the color or font, so your stream can look a little bit all over the place. With that in mind, the program that I made allows for customization of font, color, size, whether or not there's commas in the number, or hell, you can scroll the number if you really want to. But before I go into too much detail, know that this video will be separated into two distinct sections, one being an explicit tutorial on how to set up the counter, and the other being a little bit of nerd shit on how I made the program itself. Now that we have that out of the way, let's jump right in. First, make sure that you have the latest version of OBS Studio installed on either your Mac or PC. I assume that you already have it downloaded since you found this video, but if not, no worries, there's a link in the description. You can also just Google it too, or bit bing it. <laughs> Who uses bing? <laughs> Anyways, go over to the link in the description labeled Download Portal to head over to our archive and click this box to begin installing the tool. All that it's going to do is just grab your subscriber count every few seconds and update a text file that OBS will then read. So when the download finishes, run the file. On a side note, if you didn't grow up playing Minecraft like the rest of us, you will need Java for this program to work. Once you open the program, there are a few things here that you will need to set up. Firstly, you're going to need to create an API key for the program to use. That might sound a little bit daunting at first, but trust me, it's not complicated at all. Head over to the Google Developer Console by clicking the corresponding link in the description, agree to the terms of service, and hit continue. Here, create a project. You're free to call it whatever you like, but I recommend something like OBS Subscriber Counter. Once created, click the Enable APIs and Libraries button. You'll be taken to a page. Here you can scroll down and find the YouTube Data API version 3. Click on this, then hit Enable, and click Create Credentials. Select the YouTube Data API for the API that you are using, Other UI for where you will be calling the API from, and Public Data for the type of data you will be accessing. Now you can click the button at the bottom and get your API key. Ours is blurred in this video since you can do some pretty serious stuff with the API key, but you should be able to follow along no problem. Anyways, copy your key to a notepad file for later. Thankfully, the next step is a lot more straightforward. We need to grab your channel ID. There's tons of ways to do this, but one of the easiest is to go to Creator Studio and copy the portion of the URL after the final slash. I would also recommend putting this in your notepad file along with your API key. One final step, create an empty text file somewhere in your computer, give it a name, and open up the properties. Here you can figure out the file path and copy it into your notepad file from earlier. Just make sure that the name is followed by a .txt because it's a text file. No shit. Okay, that's all the information that we need. Go back to the tool that you downloaded and put in all of the corresponding information. Your API key, channel ID, and the file path of the text file. Before running this file, know that you can disable the comma formatting that numbers typically have like this if you really feel like it, but now we can hit run program. If you did everything correctly, your subscriber count should appear in the software, and we can move on to the final step. Go to OBS, create a text element, and select Read from File. Here you can select the blank text file that you created earlier, and the number should pop up. From here, creative liberties are up to you. Just please, for the love of God, don't use the default OBS font. <laughs> I used a font called Bonshrift, Band. Ban and shrift, whatever. That does complete the tutorial portion of this video, but before you go, I made a tutorial on how to add countdown timers to OBS, so if that's your thing, go check it out. Oh, and if this video helped you out, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. For those of you who are left, welcome to the nerd shit. As I suggested earlier, I made this program with Java, and I chose that language for a few specific reasons. I'm pretty efficient with it, it's super easy to build some simple UIs, 
and Google's YouTube Data API natively supports it. The first thing I did after installing the libraries that I needed was accessing some data to make sure that that worked, which it did right away, but it gave me a huge mess of jumbled JSON garbage, and all I needed to get out of that was the number of subscribers. So my less than elegant solution was to create an array of strings that was separated right by the text before the number that I needed. That cut off the first bit, but it didn't get rid of the shit at the end of the number, so I had to do it a second time. But now that I had the number, all I needed to do was optionally run it through the decimal format class to add commas every three digits unless the user manually disabled that feature. From there, building the UI was pretty straightforward. While it is certainly nothing special, it didn't really need to be. The only part of this program that I was a little bit iffy about going into it was storing the text in a file since I really haven't done that in a while, but I was surprised to see that it worked on the first time around. I'll leave a link to my source code in the description, it's just a pastebin file since I was able to fit the entire thing in one class. I'll leave that at that though, thanks for making it to the end. Again, we've made a few tutorials on this channel on OBS already, including countdown timers and capturing another computer without a physical capture card, so if those sound appealing to you, go check them out. Either way, if this video was helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.